so our, our concern, our concern is that we're teaching different Jesuses, right? And then if we're teaching different Jesuses, then can that Jesus of LDS can be saved properly? But it's okay as long as we teach the, his gospel, which is love God and love others. So if we're both teaching that, then in the end it's okay. Those are commandments. That's not the gospel, though. What about if? But that is the the essence of the gospel is to love God and to love others. But what about the Muslim who's teaching an uncrucified Christ? Does that Christ say? What's that? Because uh, in, in in Islam, uh, the Quran teaches that Christ was never crucified. And Paul says if Christ is never crucified, then we're still dead in our sin. So they're teaching a Christ who was never crucified. So there's no sacrifice. So, so they, believe, they believe in Jesus, though. They hate Jesus. Okay. So there, are they saved by believing in that version of Jesus? It's not for me to say whether they're saved or not. God's going to be the judgment, not me. But you can go to Scripture. You can go to an authority or authoritative Scripture and look and see what God says. And, and how would you come to interpret um, what Paul said if Christ was ever crucified? Then by having a prophet to tell us what he's talking about. What uh, What about when the prophet contradicts Scripture? Uh, and what prophet is that? You say Joseph Smith said that I'm going to tell you how God came to be God. We've imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I'll refute that idea. You've got to learn to become gods so, yourselves. So there's uh, the theologians have not found any scripture in the Book of Mormon that contradicts the Bible, and yet I can show you numbers of it. The Bible, yeah, but you're you're using that to. Uh, you're using your own interpretation of that scripture. In what the if Bible we just what if we just take it flat? Just take a take a verse like Second Nephi twenty five twenty three that says, "By grace you've been saved. After all, you can do." And that's that's literally quoting that's quoting Paul, but except it distorts Paul because Paul says, "By grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not according to works." That's two different that's two different perspectives. One's all grace, no works, all to the glory of God. One is me plus grace. Yeah, but see, we already talked about that, and I don't agree with that interpretation. Well, don't you believe that in order to be exalted, you have to uh, be obedient to the laws and ordinances of the gospel? Uh, no, not necessarily. Well, what's your, what's your article of faith say? I don't know. I don't read it. That all mankind may be saved through obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. Oh, okay. That's how we're saved in Mormonism. So that's a different gospel. Paul says that if you have a false gospel, you have a gospel that is anathema, which is meaning eternally condemned. Good words by Paul. Do you believe it? Um, I believe that the interpretation of it could be different among different beliefs. Well, what if I just There's quote one true it? Interpretation. Right. Yeah, you can quote it, but you can you can quote that scripture, but then there'd be other interpretations of it and what he's actually. Can you wouldn't can't see the difference between it. I mean, if you're just being honest, you can't see the difference between it. Reading it word for word, because right now between what? Uh, the the um, second Nephi twenty three twenty four and twenty five twenty three. Oh, twenty five twenty three. Yeah. And then it said, after all, you can do. Yeah, and then the other one you're quoting that it's not the works. Not according to works, lest any man should boast. By grace which, through faith. Which I interpreted as it's not according to the works of man that you're saved, it's according to the works of God that you're saved. See how the difference though is we're going to the text and letting the text speak and you're reading into the text something else. You're reading into the text something else. No, I was reading the text as I said. Uh, it, the other well, to which text are we referring to? The one that they showed me, Ephesians. Two, two, eight and nine, sort of. Right. To so me, that meant that you're saved not by the works of man, but by the works of God. Well, that none of that is in the text, though. As a matter of fact, it actually, it actually, it says in the text that you were dead in your sins and trespasses by nature, children of wrath. And it said, God made you alive together with him. By grace, you've been saved. So for Paul there, been you've been, you were spiritually dead, but God, by his grace, raised you to life. And not of the works. He says that later. Right. And not, not according to works. Not, yeah, which is saying... But Mormonism, but the Latter-day Saint theology does teach that it is through our works, our obedience and to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. Yeah, 
specifically, yeah. explicitly. Yeah, I already talked to these guys about it, and my question is, is, and they already answered it, is if you're not saved by according to works, then why does it matter if we do works? Because we're saved. Because we're new. Ephesians 3.10, yeah, so, you created for them. Right. We created you for so we, them. We're doing works. Okay. Uh, We'd say that we we're saved. You, um, you don't have to do works and you believe you're saved. In the end, can I can I point one thing out? That, that can I just this, this might help even to understand like the perspective. Paul's point about how a person is reconciled to God is that God is holy and we are depraved and sinful and we're lost. You you would agree with that um, in terms of us being sinful. At least that humans are sinful. But he says that we need a righteousness that is not our own. It's a righteousness because the righteousness that comes from God through faith in Jesus. It's Christ's righteousness. Yeah, so you either you and I are going to stand before God either in our sinfulness or and it's only through grace are we saved. Or in the righteousness of Christ, yeah. his work. Right. right? Mormonism not teaches the works of man are you saved? The works no, but Mormonism man. does teach you explicitly that it's through your works, your obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. But it's not but it's not my works that saves me, it's the works of God that saves me. Well it says it says we believe that all mankind may be saved through obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. Right, That's how you're saved. I'm, what I'm saying is that on our own, we're deficient to be saved. So that's why we need the grace of God to come in to save us. Right. And you know who else believe that? The Galatians. Paul says that they were eternally condemned. They believed that God's grace was necessary, but it wasn't sufficient. You had to do this thing. At least keep this one part of the law for to be declared righteous by God. He says, if you, anybody, he says, Christ has become of no benefit to you. Whosoever of you attempts to be justified by law, you've fallen from grace. So for, for the apostles' testimony, it's either grace received through the empty hand of faith, or it is law. Paul says you can't hold between those two positions. If you do, he says you're lost. If you keep one, you have to keep them all. We can't do that. We're sinners. Ouch. It's tough. But that, that's, it's that, tough. I mean, that's why we've been having, you know, just to get you to look at this objectively, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah because you're, you're in one, and on one side, you're saying that we're saved by grace. And then on the Mormon side, what, what Jeff just um, mentioned is yeah. we're saved by keeping the ordinances. So that's a contradiction, right? No, no, because... Because I'm not perfect, and so uh, because I'm not perfect, I need Christ to step in to fill the rest of the way. So, what do you so mean it's, was it 50 50 or is it 40 60? Uh, it just depends on him. He, he decides. So it's not his righteousness, it's some of you, some of him. But it's his grace that saves me and helps me the rest of the way. So, it, what I'm, so when he said it was finished, it wasn't really finished for you. It's not. It's not a. Com it's not. It's not a completed redemption. He was talking about something else. Well, to tell us die is a word that had to do with a transaction being completed. So remember that the veil ripped. You still have the veil up in there. The, you, your church put the veil back up. Uh, veil? The veil in the temple when Jesus died was ripped from top to bottom. That symbolized our estrangement from God. It's open now. Your church put it back up. Your church has the veil back up. It symbolizes the new covenant. I don't, I don't remember a veil being there. Hebrews, a, Hebrews 10, 14 says, For by one sacrifice he has made perfect for all time those who are being sanctified. And so Christ has made those who believe in him uh -huh. who are being sanctified. He's made them perfect by his sacrifice. And so this yeah. gets back to the, the role as the high priest. Okay. So if he is the true high priest, is he sufficient to save us completely? Those, even those to the uttermost, right? He's able to save those to the uttermost who draw nigh unto God. Uh -huh. And so this is, this is the big contradiction here. Is his grace sufficient for you 100% of the way without any without your contribution not for me to, to judge what about scripture is it for scripture yeah, to judge we'll it, we'll if you interpret it correctly but so do you do you believe do you believe well here's do you believe that God the creator of all things I think I know your answer it's more rhetorical rhetorical yeah. okay. do you believe that God the creator of all things is able to communicate so for example tonight I've been listening to you I think you're communicating fairly well huh yeah, we're, we record, okay. but you put it on YouTube to, sometimes, sometimes we don't. Um, but like tonight, you've been actually communicating very well. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding what you're saying, understand your position, but you and I are just creatures yeah. and I understand you well. 
But God can communicate, don't you believe, in a way that his creatures can understand him? Definitely. So when, like, for example, you quoted two commandments that I agree with you on, yes. love God, love neighbor, Definitely. you believe that's clear? Clear is an absolute, so I can't say. So maybe I shouldn't I love God? I can't profess to that. So maybe I should hate my neighbor? Well, no, it, it, but how to how to implement that could be foggy. Do you know Jesus answered that too? This might encourage you. Yeah. Love God, love neighbor. Jesus says all the law and the well, he says all the law and the prophets are built upon love for God, love for neighbor. So like the first two ta the tables of the law, first table, love God, second table, love neighbor. Don't lie, don't steal from them, don't murder them, don't commit adultery, don't covet their stuff, right? That's how you love your neighbor. So the law defines how to love God, love neighbor. Okay. It's that explicit. Another one would be clear, clear, a clear communication. God says, before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. You don't believe either of those things. I don't? Because Joseph taught you to otherwise, right? Oh, okay. And I'm, I'm saying uh, that, was, that was a question, right? I suppose. So that's why we're here. We care about you. And we have two different gods, two different gospels. You seem like a very honest and zealous man. We, we want you to know the true Christ. That's why we're here. Okay. So did you get one of these? So you can test no, what we're no, saying? No, no, it's okay. You don't want to take one, you try yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to take one. But um, it's interesting to know where you're coming from and your beliefs. And it's great to have, to know that there's people out there you know, separate just from, in general, the belief of Christ and that, to have that foundation to encourage others to have that belief in Christ. Which Christ? Which, uh, well, whatever Christ you want to believe in. So, how about how about the divine idea of God? How about Jesus Christ or the Rosicrucians or the Christian scientists or the mo Muslims? They're all different, though. They're all different. You know what? As long as they're trying to treat others, what if I love others, what if I bow down to him right now and worship him as Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Would you say that's appropriate? Uh, it's probably not for me to judge. So, but we so. have to be able to judge these things because otherwise, it, it, this is a mechanism that we, instead of confronting truth, we yeah. back off. We we'd rather sit with a lie yeah. or, or a possible contradiction than confronting. You know, I mean, you have yeah, children. What issue, you, yeah. Wouldn't you want them to confront what's true? I mean, it, are, 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 would you teach your children to confront what's true? To really look at it, evaluate it, the truth. And, and, and confront yes, it. But, but you're not doing that right now, if we're being honest. You're, you're backing off from, yeah, from it yeah, a little bit. Yeah, All we're trying to do is get I you to look at whole, it objectively. Um, I spent my whole time here. Yes, and we appreciate Trying not that. to debate and yeah. trying not to get in a back and forth. Yeah. And just... Hearing what you have to say to me, we appreciate, appreciate that. We, we appreciate and that. Knowing where you come from, um, you know, one thing I go by, I try not to get in debates. Um, debates don't do anything. It's not going to change your opinion. Honestly, what you're telling me is not going to change my opinion. Um, I I know that deep down in my heart, I received an answer to my prayers. And that is something that God has spoke to me. But we're not trying to no, change your opinion, though. Well, we're well, trying to get you to okay. to confront some things and look well, at the word I've, of God. I've already I've already yeah. challenged what the truth is, and I've yeah. come to know what the truth is. And it is so powerful and strong that it has become a fact to me. It's a knowledge that no one will remove. No one can change. Because I know God spoke to me and told me what is true. And the only way you'll find out what's true is if you have that experience for yourself. I've it's had an experience. To say, and it's wonderful. It's and, it, and, it, and it contradicts no. yours. So, the, so is truth not possible? Yeah. How about this? I know we'll agree on this. Yeah. You're a Latter-day Saint. So we are, well, we are, I'm a, what? We're, we're close on this. Okay. The people today who are going around saying, I've prayed about and I feel in my spirit that I am not really a boy. I'm a woman, okay. but they're wearing a beard and they have male parts, uh -huh. but they feel in their spirit. God is telling them yeah. that they are not a man. How do you feel about that? What would you say to them? They feel it deep in their uh, spirit. I God's not, touched them. I would not um, try to counteract that. You wouldn't? Ah, I see. Okay. That's, so you don't believe that... It's not for me to tell them what they need to believe and stuff like so that. So you don't... Okay. So you don't believe truth can be known. Although in my... Although I know that that's not necessarily the case, but I, it was not for me to tell them. What if you love your, what if you love your neighbor? Wouldn't you want to... part of loving your neighbor. Well, 
Yeah, but there's, but is it, is it showing them love? I think, I think loving their neighbor is loving them for who they are and who they think they are. Who are they? Who did God make them, male or female? Well, I know who they are. So you would love them rightly. You would love them rightly by loving them as a... Just because they don't know who they are doesn't mean I shouldn't love them. So if God spoke and he said that he made male and female, Jesus you would people. you would you would say, eh, maybe not. Not me. Jesus says from the beginning, someone he someone made else a, might made say a male that. and female though. Someone Jesus else might say that, and I'm still gonna respect their belief. Even what if someone what if someone says I believe passionately that we can molest children? Uh, well now you're getting into uh, something that's different where they're infringing other people's rights. Well, you know, there'd be, well, you, but you said that fundamentally you wouldn't challenge somebody's belief that they felt touched by God about. Because, you know, there are pedophiles so that believe there's, that. There's a limit to that, obviously. It's, there's exceptions to everything. You know, you speak. Who says this? Where's the standard come from? Who sets the limit? Yeah, it's you? my own standard. There you go. Okay. So, so there's no, there's no absolutes and everything. You can say stuff, but there's also exceptions to the rule. What did you say? There's no what? There's no absolutes to everything as far is, as is that you a, speak in absolutes, right? You, is, you kind of speak figuratively, right? So when I say, as you said, um, it's not for me to tell what people believe. Well, what I mean there is there's a limit to that, right? Like if someone is saying for themselves they believe they're, they're a woman, even though they're a man, okay, they're not going out and trespassing against anyone with that belief. Okay, so I'm not gonna sit here and say, "Well, you're wrong, and you need to change." Is it immoral, though? Joke. Is it immoral? It's immoral, but it's not for me to decide that. So they actually are—they are infringing on the community because they're actually publicly portraying immorality. You agree it's immoral? So, so you want to take away their free will and choice? No, I'm, so I'm talking about the about there's, the there's a, there's the decision they've made. You said it's limit you said it's immoral. Go, yes, but we don't go and force people to become moral. No, well, well we do. We do. In some instances, we do. For example, I can't go. I can't go kill them right now. But we don't force them to. To. Um, These officers that were this officer right here. If I walked up to that guy over there and punched him in the back of the head, what would he do to me? Okay, but you're not forcing them to do something. So they do. They do enforce public morality, correct? Yes, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That has to be. That has to be done. But there's a limit. All right. When it comes to policing certain actions in order to keep civil society, is 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 that has is, to be done. is denying gender immoral? If you imprint, if you reach into that, then you're starting to get into a, a field of where you're taking away people's so, free will so and where's, choice. Where's your standard? Of right. That's the, that's where we're getting to. Is the question is? To because yeah. if everybody's just sort of well, I feel this and I feel this and I feel that, then nobody can correct everybody. And, and sometimes law correction is the hardest form of love to take. But it's the most beautiful when it's root bears, you know, and that's what we're trying to do. It is, we have um, a subjective truth in the Bible and we stand by that. Where are you pulling this from is what we're asking. By the way, I'm Jeff. I'm going to take off. It was great to okay. meet you. It was, a it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank yeah, you for talking to, talking to us. To yeah, yeah, thank you. No problem.